Okay, so today I'm going to show you how I make my cloth masks. I'm not a seamstress, so I might not use the right terminology or do anything right. That's fine. I learned how to sew from my grandmother. She was a terrible seamstress, but we're going to make something that works, okay? So all you really need is you need a liner cloth and an hour cloth. Um, cotton non-knit cloth is probably going to be the best thing that you can do for now. Like, it's going to be the tightest weave with still being breathable. And you can use the same cloth for the for the uh, inside and outside. This is just a bit more attractive and you can have a, something cheaper for the lining since you can do like a flat color. It doesn't really matter. I've got a die and I will post a link to this. I'm just going to scan it. This is the die that I use to cut out my pattern. Um, and essentially it's just one piece for both the front and the back, and I have a little marking here for how I do my dart for my nose. It's not gospel truth because honestly, I eye the dart. I'm not a very precise person. So, and you need your scissors, and you're also going to need some sort of cord. You can use elastic. I would suggest using cord because it's a lot more comfortable. It's a little bit less attractive, but you can use it um, a lot more comfortably, and it'll fit a lot more different people because people have different size heads. So this is the cord I'm using. When I run out of this, I'm just going to use a chunk of yarn. It works just fine. So you're also going to want, of course, your pins and stuff and whatever sewing equipment you're using. I just have a cheap $75 sewing machine because, like I said, not a seamstress. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your liner cloth, whatever that may be. Gonna open it up here. I'm going to leave, just for this sake, one side folded because I'm actually going to cut out multiple masks at once because people have been asking me for them. So for the liner, you're going to use the die and you're just going to pin it wherever you think you can get the most use out of it. I'm pinning it on the edge and I'm going to cut the edge so that I make two pieces uh, just for two masks. I'm going to pin it and then when I pin it, I'm going to cut it right around the die. So I'm referring to this as a die because it's not really a full pattern. I don't know how to make full patterns. So it includes like about a half inch allowance for the seam that you're going to be making a half inch because I'm not skilled enough to do much smaller seams. <laughs> kind of a messy bitch. So. So it's fine. I'm going to cut this edge so I have two pieces. Obviously you don't have to cut an edge, you don't have to make two pieces, you can make this one. But I fold them in half so I can get two. All right, so that is my liner fabric. So I'm gonna put that aside. Put the cloth aside. And now I'm going to take the outside. So the outside is actually a little bit different. I'm using the same die, but how I'm going to approach it is slightly different. So, so I am going to actually not put this right to the edge, but about right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut about an inch past this line because this is going to be folded over for the strap. So I'm going to give myself about an extra inch on both of these ends and I'll show you what that looks like once I've got it cut out. So let's do that real quick. Alright, so what you can see is I cut out the die, but then I left about an inch extra on either side and I just cut parallel to the die on each end. So you only do it for these two ends because these are going to be folded over and that's going to be how your straps are held in. So, let's put this to the side, put our pins back. Now we're going to 
to actually press the seams that we need for this first part. So you're gonna have to keep an iron hot and ready to press your seams. So let's do that. Okay, so for this first part pressing, what we're gonna do is for both the liner and the outside, we are going to fold them in half. And we're going to have the, if there's a pattern, make it face inside the fold. And don't mind me, I don't have an ironing board, so I'm just doing it here. I'm moving out of this apartment in a month anyways. Don't burn your countertop. Doing the same here, this doesn't have a pattern, so the facing doesn't matter. leave that on because we're going to be coming back to it. Okay, we are now at the sewing machine. Sewing machine. Uh, we're going to do darts for the nose. So if you don't know what that is, essentially you're going to sew a little seam right here that's going to be triangular for the nose. So essentially you're just going to sew a line to make this little triangle here. So you can be precise and like measure out where you're going to do the dart, but I basically just try to do a like a right triangle from here to here. My hand's in the way. So I'll show you what that looks like when I sew it. No pinning, just going. Let me change up my thread so it's actually black. I'm going to sew this little triangle here, make it about a 90 degree angle, 45, or rather two 45 degree angles. Do a little bit of back stitching to secure that. I don't know. Not a seamstress. Let's cut those extras. Alright, so I made that a little bit steep. But you can see that it's a little triangle right there that I sewed. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut off this extra fabric here. Because that's going to be inside the mask. So I'll leave about a quarter inch seam. There you go. And so when you turn that out, that is the inside of our mask. Okay, but we're just gonna leave it like that for now. And let's do the same thing for the liner right here. Okay, so you can't see it because it's black on black, but there's the same triangle here. I'm going to cut off this extra fabric. So now you have the inside of your mask, like so. Okay, now is when we start actually sewing the inside and the outside together. So, you're actually going to have the pattern side, so this is how I, I essentially put them together. I have the pattern side here, and I've got it turned out so that the seam is not facing you. And then I'm going to take this and stack it on top of it with 
the clean side of the seam also facing inside. So when you stack it on top, the rough edge of the seam should be facing towards you. So essentially the outside, the in, part of the mass is going to be inside is on the outside right now. And see they match up. They should match up fairly well depending on how consistently you did your darts. So you can pin that. I like to raw dog it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure they're lined up pretty well. And then I'm going to sew this top edge and this bottom edge. You do not sew the sides. Not yet. So I'm going to do the top edge first. Doesn't really matter. Boop, boop. Leaving a quarter to a half inch seam. Gonna turn this a little bit. Not perfectly straight, but like I said, neither am I. Okay. Let's do the bottom. You can do all the way to the edge of the facing, but it it makes it look a little bit different, but it doesn't really matter. Make sure these are lined up. any extra thread off just because it'll get in the way even though this is going to be on the inside so it doesn't entirely matter but it will get caught in your machine or my machine it will okay so now you've got the inside on the outside what you're going to do next is flip it inside out Boop. just like a laundry day So now your seams should all be on the inside, including the nose dart. Alright, so I'm kind of lining up those darts again, folding it here. Now what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to go back to my iron and I want to press this flat so that the seams are kind of pushed out properly so that it has essentially the shape that you want it to be. So I'm pushing all these seams to the proper place. So you can already see how it's going to fit. I lied. I'm going to show you how to press it just in case anybody is as dumb as I am. So I'm getting these seams pushed all the way out and I'm going to just press those seams so that they stay where that you need them when we sew it. I try to get the liner to stay on the inside so you can't see it once you've pressed it. Get that seam set up. Iron it so it stays in place. edge. And finally this edge here. Alright, so now you have your basic face shape and what we're going to do next is we're going to actually stitch these seams so they stay flat like this. I can't remember what this kind of seam stitching is called so 
but essentially your stitching on the outside of the seam seems to keep them in place. Okay, so like once again, I don't pin it. It's not as necessary for this part. Like if you're gonna pin it, do it when you're actually doing the two sides together. But here, since you've pressed it, everything's pretty much gonna stay in place. And I'm just gonna sew, actually I'm gonna sew about a quarter inch from the edge. Let's call that a quarter inch. So we're only going to do the top and the bottom because the sides are still reserved for putting in our cords, our face ties. Alright, so that's the bottom edge. I'm going to do the top edge. This one I am actually might lift up in the middle to turn it. to wander a bit on the nose, but it shouldn't matter. This part is mostly for keeping things in place. So it won't, if you completely go off the rails, it won't affect the wearability of the mask. But now, I've got that. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make loopholes on these sides. And I did not make this easy by doing this on a black table. So here, let's put some white down so you can see better. So. And like I said, you can pin this if you're a more fancy person than I am, but essentially what you're going to do is you're going to make two folds. You're going to make one little fold here, and this is going to be the seam part. And this is maybe a quarter to a half inch. And then you're going to make a bigger fold. And this part right here is where the cord is going to throw through. So you're going to want to essentially see right here how I have this much space right here. I'm going to basically fold it right to the lining. And you know what? I will pin this. And though I'm not good at pinning stuff. So that you have those two folds there. I'll do it on the other side too. I'm gonna fold what's gonna be the seam and then what's gonna be the loop. So it's essentially mm, I would give yourself three quarters of an inch or so in this way, like two centimeters. So that is big enough for most of the things that you might want to use as a cord. Pin it right along the edge here so that seam stays in place. So this, you can see how I did not pin that on the seam. These are going to be your cord holes. And this is going to be the last step. We're just going to sew this part right here and this part right here. And you're going to want to sew it pretty much as much near the edge of the seam right here as you can so that you have room for whatever's going to go in here. So let's do that. To know on this, when you sew it, you probably want to sew 
either all the way to the edge or at least past this part because otherwise the seam might start to kind of flip. <laughs> might start to flip out, especially after you wash it. So these things are fairly washable, but if you didn't kind of keep the seams in place, they can they can deform, especially the seams on the side can turn out, but it's not a huge deal. Still, the key to these things is that they're usable. strings here and here you have a usable face mask so now I'm going to show you how I thread the cord through um, it can be a little tricky but one thing I suggest you get if you're already going to the craft store to do this is I suggest that you buy a crochet hook for this purpose so let me fetch mine so, I would highly suggest pulling the cord from the bottom to the top. So that means I'm going to insert my crochet hook through the top, and then take my cord. I'm going to just kind of nick it in there. I wish I had a bigger crochet hook for this, but not worth going out to buy. I'm going to pull that up through. Try to keep it even-ish. And I'm going to do that on the other side as well. All right. And since these fray at the ends, if you have anything like yarn or anything like that that's going to fray, just tie a knot at the end so it doesn't. This is why shoelaces will probably make a really good solution because they will be easier to thread and they won't fray quite so easily because of the... Uh, Oh, what's the trick? The... There's a word for it. The things on the ends of the shoelaces. It actually has a name. The frumulet. I don't know. So, this is your completed mask, and I will show you how it goes on. I hope you enjoy the lovely scenery behind me. So, first thing is with your hair. If you have straight hair like me and I have really slick hair, so that's actually one of the reasons I did this with the cord because it's really easy for elastic to slide off my hair unless it's super tight, which is super painful. So I'm gonna take the bottom, which I've got like a loop, and just fit it over my head. Gonna tuck my hair behind my ears and I'm actually gonna pull my hair over that. And then I'm gonna kind of tighten it around the bottom. Then I'm gonna put my nose in it. And then I'm going to tie it up top. Ooh, you put my hair behind my ears again or it's going to get slick. So I'm just going to tie it in the back of my head. Sorry if you can't tie behind your back. I did a lot of lab work with aprons, so I learned how to tie stuff behind my back. So there you go. If you put it up on your head, it tends to stay in place better. I know it's putting my hair up. I usually have a ponytail with these. But there you go. That's all you really need. The nose is oversized for people like me with oversized nose. There you go.